Part of what I love about reptiles is if they're affectionate or they seem to like to hang out with you too. But if you're looking for more of a display animal and don't care, well, I've got five for you. Today, we're going over the top five least affectionate reptiles and the five close substitutes that'll actually love you. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. Of course, keep in mind there are exceptions to the rule. So these are the ones that kind of fit into the mold rather than the exceptions. The average man is going to be 5'11 or whatever the height is, more than me. You get the point, let's start it off. Number five, snapping turtles. Okay, I know that Clint's reptiles, a much larger channel than me, has a very affectionate snapping turtle, but most of them act like this. And that's because they're going to be food for certain animals out in the wild, and also they need that jaw to catch their prey. So what's really cool about alligator snapping turtles, although we're showing mostly common snapping turtles, is they'll wriggle around like a worm, like appendage at the end of their tongue or on the top of their tongue to try to catch food. They're kind of ambush predators. So when a fish kind of swims by or whatever the food source is, they need to close their mouth in a hurry and basically dispatch the animal just with the force of their bite. So if they want to protect themselves, same sort of thing. Kind of like how a porcupine has the quills and you know, you get one of those to the face, you'll kind of give up. Same sort of idea. If a snapping turtle bites you, you're probably gonna give up on it as a food source for that day anyway. So instead, get a box turtle. This is Floyd, by the way, he's a beauty. These guys tend to actually really like companionship. Of course, it's probably for food. I mean, Floyd is a pig. When I come up to the glass, he'll like almost jump out as much as a turtle could jump to get to me because I'm the food man. So I understand that it's because I deliver sustenance to him, but at the same time, it seems affectionate. And at the end of the day, I did a video right here or here, wherever that pops up, all about affectionate reptiles. And like I say in that video, these are animals that seem to want your attention, not actually want it for love. My dogs want my attention because they love me and I love them. With reptiles, generally they want you for warmth or for food or whatever else. But anyway, box turtles are freaking amazing. I think they're cool. They have an insectivorous diet, although they act similar to a tortoise, and you can keep them outside if you want to, if you live in the right climate. Okay, let's move on. Number four, green tree pythons. Green tree pythons are very similar in their appearance to emerald tree boas, which again, are not the most friendly species on average, let's say. And I always talk about Amazon tree boas, so let's talk about the green tree pythons. Similar in that they're arboreal, they have really big teeth because in the wild, they're gonna be catching things like birds. These guys generally aren't gonna be as crazy as Amazon tree boas in their willingness to strike you. But if you do bug them on their perch, cause they're gonna kind of coil up on a perch most of the time, they're not gonna put up with it. So instead, I think you should get a spotted python because they're also arboreal. They are going to be around five feet. Okay, and they're gonna spend most of their time in the trees. They're gonna be the biggest in the Antiresia family, and they're gonna be semi-arboreal. So they're gonna get to about four feet, maybe a little bit bigger. I've seen them as big as six foot two inches, although this is really, really rare. And with these guys, they're gonna spend a lot of the time in the trees too. Maybe a little bit more on the ground. They don't coil the same way. They still have a crazy food drive. They're from Australia, so similar region of the world, let's say. Of course, they're not gonna be as brilliantly colored, there is something about a green snake in an enclosure that is beautiful and majestic and eye-catching. But if you have something like a spotted python, I think they're beautiful also. Or if you wanted an antel python, sometimes called a pygmy, it's the smallest python in the world. But I just think spotted pythons are more similar. I handle mine all the time. Don't worry about them. I can throw them up on the boom mic and he just kind of slithers around. These guys grow slow. They stay small. I think that they're absolutely beautiful. There's not really a lot of morphs, but just the normal look of them is fantastic and they're personable and they're easy to care for. So spotted pythons, highly underrated and I would recommend them. Number three, blood pythons. We're gonna call it blood pythons and short tail pythons because they're so darn similar. They're basically short and fat. And by that, I mean they're four to six feet and they're gonna be up to 25 pounds. For example, a ball python, which is close enough related that you can make hybrids with them, they're gonna be four to five feet, maybe six if you get a big female, but they're never gonna get more than maybe seven pounds. Like very rarely, a big female at 4,000 grams, that would be really, really big. Where it's very common for the blood python and the short tail python to get 
bigger. They're the non-venomous version, in my opinion, of like a Gaboon Viper, in that they're just chonky. So, chonky. like, sausages, you know? But they are very fast and they are not tolerant to handling most of the time unless you really work with them. Now there are guys out there like the Brian Cuscos of the world that work with his, but a ball python is going to tame out much easier. No, they're not as beautiful in my opinion in terms of just like the normal coloration, but you can make, I think they're called angry balls or blood balls, which sounds so uncomfortable. There's just so many options that are gonna be more tolerant to handling, but let's go with Dormol's boas just because, I mean, they're on the ground, similar, right? They're terrestrial species like a blood python. They're not crazy amount of morphs, although blood pythons have more. They're gonna be pretty tolerant to handling and to playing with them and things like that. Uh, their enclosure needs to be around the same size. They're not gonna get too big. They're gonna be robust and intelligent and fun. Just overall, Dormal's boas are a better option if you're looking for a heavier bodied snake that isn't going to bite the crap out of you. That's it, let's move on. Number two, African rock pythons. Oh boy, do I get in trouble when I talk negatively. And it's not even negatively, it's just being real. Here's why though, I'll just preface that. Preface, preface, whatever. They're not as widely bred. So I imagine that if you took a Burmese python out of the wild, it's probably not gonna be the puppy dogs. By puppy dogs, I mean they're generally well-tempered. But African rock pythons, the largest snake in Africa, they're gonna be 10 to 16 feet on average, but I, I think closer to the smaller end of that, they're gonna be smaller than berms on average from what I can gather from people who keep them both. I think with African rock pythons, if we continue to breed them and have more generations, maybe they'll lose a little bit of that cantankerousness, but for now, I think berms are clearly the better option. And I think with African rock pythons, the morphs are just wildly expensive right now. And there are people that are hybridizing them, but berms are easy to find, they're inexpensive. And if you are looking for a big snake, because keep this in mind, this is not advice to most people. Most people can't take care of a snake that gets to, you know, 16 feet or something like that. It's a lot. And anything in my opinion over 10 or 12 feet, if you're kind of risk adverse, you should have someone in the room. So if I handle Burmese pythons, there's always somebody in the room, just in case. Because if for whatever reason, you accidentally leave a little bit of mouse or rat scent on your hand and they think you're food and they wrap you, it could be a dangerous situation. But unless they think you're food, I don't think it's an issue at all. I've done lots of videos on them. I think they're amazing, they're beautiful. Should we do a care guide on Burmese pythons? Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button and stuff. But for now, let's move on. Number one, least affectionate reptile, viper boas. This is gonna be a tough one to find a substitute because they're so unique. Viper boas are ground boas. They are gonna be under the foliage. They are going to be very small and stout, two to three feet. They're gonna be round and thick. Not so much like a blood python, but approaching that territory in relation to their stoutness, their length, and they're going to be very cantankerous. So I see no issue with this. I don't think they're monsters. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I think they're beautiful and amazing. I'm just not the type of guy that takes care of animals that always want to bite the crap out of me, except for diamond it in my ear, but we're working on it. It's been good so far today, knock on wood. So instead, I'm going to give you two options. I personally think the best option is a hog island boa because they get to about five feet, so a little bit bigger, but around the same stoutness. They're never gonna get to, you know, 10 plus pounds. They're generally very evenly tempered, easy to take care of, but they're arboreal. So if you really want something that is a ground dwelling boa, I think Dumerals boas are too big. We've already used them in the list. So what about a Solomon Island ground boa? They have a very cryptic pattern. They're beautiful, they're amazing. They're very uncommon. Your friends probably don't have them and they're cheap. They're one of the cheaper reptiles that I think once people start to breed and think that they're amazing, they're gonna rise in value. And from my experience actually handling these guys, Solomon Island ground boas are pretty generally easy to handle and not that apt to bite. So I would just say Hog Island because they're easier to find. There's more generations of them. I don't like taking animals out of the wild and a lot of Solomon Island ground boas. It's possible that they were not captive bred, where the Hog Islands that you're gonna see likely were captive bred. So it's really up to you. I'm giving you two options on this one. I don't know, which one do you like best? And there you go. I really appreciate it if you guys hit the like and subscribe button. I know every YouTuber says it, but it really does help the channel reach a broader audience and keep these reptiles fed and all that good stuff. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get discounts on the merch, new designs dropping this week, or maybe it was last week, but anyway, Patreon gets first dibs and a big discount first. You guys get extra content, vlogs, uh, you know what, the trips, all that and more for as little as a dollar a month. Oh, and also the first reptile room tour we ever did is only on Patreon now.
What a wild video. Okay, this is a long outro. I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. I'll see you in the next one.